I finally managed to kick a nasty cough that has been plaguing me for the last two weeks, so I'm back with some more content, and just in time, seeing as how it's October now, and it is the season of frights, I thought I would declare this month as Ravenloft month, and so for the next couple of weeks I will be focusing on the Democlean of Red here on my channel. As many of you are sure to know, especially if you saw my first videos on Ravenloft, the Demiplane of Dread is built up of countless of domains, each ruled over by an evil dark lord. These lands are all unique and interesting locales that can provide countless different gaming experiences, so to ease us into Ravenloft month, I thought I would present my personal top 10 favorite Ravenloft domains. In many ways, Barovia is the most iconic of all the Ravenloft domains. After all, it was the first, and it served as the basis for the entire campaign setting. It is also the Ravenloft domain that I've probably had my best experiences in, having run several games set there, and I would argue it is the domain that I've read the most about. So, it might be a bit surprising to some to see that Barovia is on my 10th place. Barovia just doesn't stand out enough from the rest of the domains, and after being the focus of adventures over 5 editions, I feel that poor old Stra deserves a rest. Although I have a basic grasp of Dragonlance, I have never read much of the novels, and I've never played a game set in Kryn. I have experienced a small and depressing realm ripped from the world of Dragonlance, however, in Sificus. A trip through Sificus offers many interesting options to switch things up for a Ravenloft group. It is one of the few places where humans are not in the majority, being the only real elvish kingdom in Ravenloft, and as such stands out quite a bit from the rest of the core realms. They are mostly inspired by Eastern Europe. The elves of Sificus, however, are not like their kin. They are a dour and colorless folk, bereft of hope, living underneath the tyranny of one of the most famous dark lords of Ravenloft, the Deaf Knight Lord Soth. Sificus is also the home to the unusual and terrifying vampire Kender, which will no doubt surprise most visitors. In fact, even the stars are different in Sificus, as they are a dark and twisted reflection of Crins. Overall, it's a nice place to send your players to switch things up, without going too far out of your way. Even though Barovia is the heart and origin of Ravenloft, and probably what people think about first and foremost whenever the setting is brought up, for me personally, nothing personifies Ravenloft more than the lands along the western coast of the core. For me, Ravenloft is a renaissance, or later, setting with large cities choked in mist and smog. A land with dark forests, but also jagged coasts and even darker seas. As such, most of my campaigns have been set along the west coast, which in many ways is the cultural and scientific center of the Domain of Dread. The Mentlieu, and especially the capital of Port Alazine, definitely fill that role. The domain lord, Dominic de Honneur, is a rather boring one and will most likely not have much to do with the players unless they move amongst the nobility. But Port Alazine can function as a hub for players in Ravenloft, allowing them to find passage to more exotic lands and to find rare goods and a relative safe haven from the more obvious terrors of the Demiplane, allowing for more subtle horror. The Nightmare Lands are probably one of the most bizarre domains. For one, it may very well be that they have more than one Dark Lord that rules it. And just like the name implies, it is a land of nightmares, and as such is ever-changing and shifting, offering strange and psychedelic visuals. Although you can't physically visit the domain, the most common and probably the most effective use of it comes from its ruler's ability to draw unsuspecting dreamers into the domain to experience nightmares. This can lead to such things as one-shot dream scenarios to break up the monotony of a long journey, but can also be used to draw characters into Ravenloft. Because the Lords of the Nightmare Lands have the unique ability to affect dreamers of the Material Plane as well as those in Ravenloft. This also allows for the Nightmare Lands to be used as a way to throw a little bit of Ravenloft into your regular D&D game, if you're looking to switch things up without committing to a full Ravenloft campaign. Another domain on the western side of the core, Rishmilua is a land that offers plenty of opportunities for urban adventure. The domain has several large cities and boosts a fairly large population, but ever since it first appeared, a third of the buildings of the land have stood abandoned, which has led to a large influx of immigrants seeking to take advantage of the easy-to-come-by real estate. The large swaths of abandoned buildings, huge sewer systems, and a large fractured population serve as a breeding ground for all kinds of urban monsters most specifically were-rats. Richemilieu is essentially a land designed to be a perfect haven and hunting ground for the lycanthropes. 
Nowadays, it feels like every major D&D city has a huge sewer filled with legion of rat rats, but when I started out, most of our adventures took place in wilderness, castles and small villages. Rishmilia was a completely new kind of environment for me, and even though it might no longer be as unique, I still have a soft spot for the land in my heart. Sooner or later, all my campaigns seem to end up in Lamordia. I'm not entirely sure what it is that makes me like the domain so much. Perhaps it's just the fact that it was the first domain I read about after buying the campaign setting. Or it might be because of my love of golems and constructs. Lamordia is a land roughly based on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, a tale that I have always enjoyed. It is a land where the people have largely given up on faith and turned to science. It's one of the most technologically advanced countries in Ravenloft, although you might not realize it at a glance, since the land is mostly ragged wilderness with a couple of small towns scattered about the mountains and forests. Perhaps that is part of the reason why I enjoy it so. It offers the rugged and harsh wilderness of Barovia, combined with the muskets and weird science of the west coast, with a healthy sprinkling of flesh golems in for good measure. I would say that the original recipe for a Ravenloft adventure is that the players are trapped and isolated in the Dark Lord's domain and their only hope of escape is to defeat the Dark Lord. That is definitely the type of story that fits for Ostakov. Vorostokov is a land of permanent winter, where just surviving the land can be just as much or even more challenging than any of the creatures that inhabit it. Themes that have always resonated well with me. Unable to farm, and with their food stores slowly depleting, the pe people of Vorostokov have to rely on hunting to survive. But game is growing harder to come by as the winter goes on, while the land is seeming to be being overrun with ravenous wolves. Though many of those wolves are just what they seem, there is a large faction of werewolves in Brostokov being used as enforcers by the land's ruler and dark lord, and they have found one source of meat that is still in plenty of supply in the land, their fellow men. If you've played Curse of Strahd, you will no doubt have encountered the character Blinsky or his toys. Toys with a morbid or gothic twist, like straight out of a Tim Burton movie. All of my players have loved Blinsky and his bizarre creations, so imagine if there was a domain based around a toy maker with a similar taste in toys, except that those toys would be completely evil. Well, there is, and it's called Odier. To my knowledge, Odier is the only domain that is actually pulled directly from our world, having once been a small village in medieval Italy. Its dark lord is a twisted Pinocchio named Maligno, who has forced his creator, Giuseppe, to create all kinds of twisted and potentially powerful toys. Key amongst these are the Karyatids, string puppets with the ability to transfer their souls into the bodies of human adults. Currently, the domain is entirely populated by children and teenagers, after Maligno and his minions went on a killing spree, murdering all the adults except Giuseppe. The different bizarre toy monsters and magical items are definitely the best part of this domain, and make it worthy of my third spot. As anyone who has watched my other videos would know, my favorite campaign setting is Dark Sun. So it might not come as a huge surprise that one of my absolute favorite domains in Ravenloft they used to reside on Athos. Caledonia is a city-state that after a dark ritual was seemingly completely destroyed on Athos, but as it turns out, many of these citizens actually survived as the city was drawn into the mists and found its place in Ravenloft. I've long planned to run an adventure where my players explore Caledonia, and several of my Dark Sun groups have come close to ending up there, but it can also serve as a way for a Ravenloft group to experience the exotic lands of Dark Sun for a few evenings, a setting that is otherwise very hard to travel to and from. I doubt anyone would have guessed that Skiena would be my favorite Ravenloft domain. In fact, I think many of you out there might be wondering, what the hell is Skiena? Well, Skiena is perhaps the smallest of all the domains, consisting of a single theater with a single inhabitant, its dark lord, Lemo Zidiam Juste, who, to be honest, although he is a competent illusionist, is one of the weaker dark lords. So why is it my favorite? Well, it mostly comes down to the fact that it's a domain that has always inspired me. When I first read through the Domains of Dead, Dread, I started getting ideas for adventures around Skena. The domain acts as a doorway of sorts, opening up to the material planes and Ravenloft alike, allowing quick and easy access to the setting and also a potential escape. The nature of a theater also means that you can either use Skena as a way to thrust your characters into the larger world of Ravenloft, or just kidnap them for a quick little adventure amongst the mists before dumping them back home. 
On the stage of Skena, anything just say writes comes to life, and the players can lose themselves in layers of illusional realities, trying to out outsmart the Dark Lord. But since Juste is an illusionist and far from unbeatable, Skena offers a chance for relatively low char level characters to come face to face with a Dark Lord and to challenge him, something I found often impossible with many other Dark Lords when I was younger, as they were far too powerful for any of my groups to handle. Of course, in the end, it all comes down to personal taste. So I would like to throw the back the question to you guys. What domains in Ravenloft do you enjoy the most? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed my video, then please leave a like. It always makes me happy. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and to hit the notification button. If you want to support the channel, then share this video with your friends or on social media. It really helps out a lot. Or you can check out my Tumblr, Twitter, or DM's Guild product page. Until next time, Dungeon Delvers.